Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our pre-engine teardown checklist. So today in this video, we're just going to go over some uh, basic can timing principles. Um, we've got our dummy engine set up here now. Uh, this is really a good point in which we can do some practice work and get comfortable with the gauges and how everything works. So um, I want to check these cams just to make sure uh, that the technician that put this engine together before me had everything set up correctly. That way I'll know in my mind when I get farther into the engine um, the type of work uh, we're going to be looking at inside there. Um, also, uh, the gauge is very important to understand how to read these gauges. I think that's probably going to be the best place to start. So let's go ahead and pull the gauges out, we'll go over those, uh, then we'll set it back up and just kind of roll through the cam timing basics. We won't make it a long, drawn out, detailed video. We're not going to take it all apart and put it back together. We're just basically going to get you comfortable with um, how it works. So, if you do a mock-up, you can set this up early in the game before you take your engine apart. You can, uh, you can already learn how to do it that way. When you've spent the money and you put your engine back together, you'll have 100% confidence you can get the job done. So for gauges, I've just gone ahead and purchased a couple different types here. Um, these are just inexpensive type gauges. Um, this one would, would definitely be accurate enough to do the job uh, final go around. I may or may not use that on the final go around, but for practice and getting things uh, sorted out, I needed to have a starting point. Uh, this particular one here, this is a top dead center gauge, and uh, the way this works, so let's say this is your piston, uh, presses against the, the dial uh, sensor there, and uh, when it reaches a peak, uh, that should give you an indication on your dial uh, where the top of your piston is. That's a theory anyways, uh, however on these engines it doesn't really work that good because what's happening is the approach angle of the piston is more like this, right? So it's hitting the side of that tip there and uh, this is a squared off tip, not a rounded tip and also there's too much lash in there so uh, this type of a gauge uh, not really that good for finding top dead center. I think your Z1 mark is probably the more accurate way to go but we'll go ahead and set this up um, just so you can kind of get the idea of what's happening with it. Uh, but I would not recommend wasting your money on this. And then our next type of gauge is a combination type of gauge and uh, what you're going to want here is a one inch throw uh, as far as range. So you're going to need a full one inch. Nice thing about this gauge, um, when you zero it out, uh, you know, you can zero it out, say, mid-range. If it comes this way, you'll get a negative reading. If it goes the other way, you'll get a positive reading. So you get both readings on that. Also, you can convert from inches to millimeters. Zero it out. Let's go. Uh, let's go six millimeters. Six millimeters, and then convert that to inches. 0.236 inches. So uh, real handy to to have here, especially for the beginner, um, because counting the revolutions on your dial can get you into trouble. Something like this is going to be spot on. Not going to make a mistake there you'll know exactly in millimeters or inches where you need to be. And then for the mounting block, I've gone with the uh, Stomsky Racing SRO 98. And uh, this is a really well engineered, uh, very well thought out piece of tooling. Uh, the thing I like about it is it's got two mounting locations. Uh, the original factory Z block to do this job only had one. And uh, what I found out by just kind of playing with the whole process um, the slightest little wiggle, any kind of movement in here at all, any instability is going to affect your reading on your gauge. Um, so having two securing points, uh, really a big help with that. Also, the way it's set up in here, it automatically sets up your preload with your gauge. Got to stop in there. Um, it comes with some uh, accessory pieces to screw into your gauge depending on uh, the thread pattern or how much length you need on there. Because uh, your original gauge is going to probably come with a foot it looks like that and that's not going to work so um, it's been thought out and measured to do just this job so um, I definitely recommend that if it was me I would uh, forgo this one I'd save your money on that and spend it on this I'd get two of these um, you don't have to have two of these to to do this job but for the beginner and uh, even for the experienced guy having two of these on there uh, really makes it nice you can verify your readings on both sides you don't have to worry about tearing one side down and uh, if you have to go back there and double check something it's already been torn down so just having two of them really makes the job a lot smoother and gives you a lot more confidence. So before we get started let's just do a quick review on uh, valve overlap. What is it? Why we need to have it? 
and how it relates to all this cam timing business. If you guys already know about this, uh, this can be pretty boring for you. But there's a lot of us out there who don't really understand it and why we have it. So the first thing that we want to understand is that the valve overlap takes place on the exhaust stroke. As our exhaust is coming up, reaching top dead center, we still have some unspent uh, material that's uh, going to make its way out of the exhaust valve. So this carbon deposits and emissions in here um, is still kind of sitting in this chamber. Our exhaust valve would close off, our intake valve would open up, and as the fresh air, fresh fuel would come in, we'd have this mix of uh, old carbons and uh, emissions mixed in with our fresh air intake. So our volume efficiency is not very good with this setup. So what they've come up with to solve this problem is uh, at top dead center, when uh, we still have some remaining um, emissions in there that need to get scavenged out, if we open up the, the intake valve at the same time as our exhaust valve, um, what happens is the velocity of the fresh air coming in helps sweep that out in that direction. It just takes it and cleans it right out of there. It helps scavenge it out. And that's going to depend on how far open we are here. This is our spec measurement. This is what we're trying to measure is right here from, from valve, back of valve, uh, to valve seat. All right, we're going to have a distance traveled, and that distance traveled is going to be the spec that we're after in this video. So really the whole principle of this is just to help scavenge out all the uh, remaining gases out of the cylinder so that when we come down on our intake stroke, we have good volume efficiency for fuel and air and have good combustion. It really boils down to uh, power. So by having valve overlap, we create more power by having greater volume efficiency. Um, and if the more aggressive we are in our opening here, the more volume efficiency we'll create by sweeping this gas out. Um, however, we do, we do have some fresh air uh, and fuel gases uh, being swept out with the exhaust gases. That's why environmentally, um, you know, we have a problem with it. So uh, the more we open this, the better the scavenging, but the more the raw fuel gets dumped out to the outside. Okay, so probably the best place to start here would be setting up the correct orientation of everything. So let's start with a crankshaft pulley. Um, so on your crankshaft pulley, you're going to have a locating dowel on the back side. That's going to drop into your crankshaft, and uh, then you can go ahead and torque it down, and that'll give you the correct location for that. Uh, the next thing is uh, on your pulley, you're going to have a Z1 reference mark stamped in it uh, with a little notch at the top of it. And that notch is going to line up uh, directly in center of your engine case halves. That's what that is, a uh, locating mark or top dead center. And then our uh, left and right cams, both the uh, punch mark will be facing upwards on the top there. That would be the correct orientation for camshafts left and right. And then looking at our right side here so we can see the dot, the uh, punch mark is at the top. Um, some of you guys will have 930 uh, stamped in there. That would be at the top. Or if you don't have any markings on here at all, the correct orientation for both left and right side will be with the, uh, the slotted key at the top. So then the next thing we want to try and get familiar with is exactly what is going on inside the engine as we're rotating. So we're rotating clockwise here. Um, what we have is we have 360 degrees, 720 degrees, two full revolutions equals one revolution of our camshaft. So for every two times our crankshaft goes around, our camshaft only rotates one time. So that's an important thing to remember. It's about a two to one ratio. So now we got a good understanding of our crankshaft rotation ratio. Let's take a look and see um, how it works in relation to our number one cylinder, which is really our starting point here for all this cam timing business. Um, we're going to go ahead and figure out what events are taking place inside the engine as we roll through all four strokes of the engine. So next, let's do a quick review of our four different strokes going on inside this engine uh, during our 720 degree rotation. So we have intake stroke, compression stroke, we have combustion stroke, or also known as a power stroke, and then we have exhaust stroke. So what we want to do is we want to break all four of those down in our 720 degree rotation here. And while that's being broken down, we're going to take a look at all the different valve events going on on number one cylinder as we're rotating the engine. All right, so let's assume we got everything in uh, proper orientation. We got our Z1 mark lined up here where it's supposed to be top dead center. Number one cylinder is going to be top dead center. Uh, we've dialed our gauge in. Hopefully we're uh, accurate on that. 
we're zeroed out on our uh, dial indicator here. So position of top depth center here, this is the beginning of the firing stroke. So it's going to work its way down. This is our power stroke right here. So we're going to fire and come down. That's top dead center for number one. For number four here, at the same time, we're also at top dead center, but we're at top dead center on our exhaust stroke. So number one and number four both are at top dead center, but they're doing two different events at the same time. So while we're on number one firing, we're on number four. We're already in valve overlap right here at top dead center. So keep an eye on the gauge and see exactly what's happening um, as we're going through our rotation. All right, there's basically 180 degrees. So, so far, nothing has happened with our valves at this point. Okay, so our first stroke is complete. Now we're going to uh, start our second stroke from 180 degrees to 360 degrees. And right here is where all our uh, cam overlap business takes place. So this is really the most important part of your cam timing is on this particular from here on up. So we've gone uh, 180 degrees. This is our power stroke. Uh, we're now at bottom dead center here. We're going to come up uh, in our exhaust. And when we get to the top, we're going to be in valve overlap. So watch what happens to those gauges as I crank this thing around. So coming up from bottom dead center of our power stroke, we are now turning into exhaust stroke, bottom dead center, headed towards top dead center in overlap at number one cylinder. Keep an eye on the gauge as we get near the top there. Okay, I'm gonna get a measurement. I'm just going to go until my top dead center gauge tells me I'm at zero. Right there. All right, let's just try and explain what just happened there. So um, we reached the bottom of our power stroke, bottom dead center. Um, that's 180 degrees. Then from 180 degrees, up to 360 degrees rotation. This is going to be our exhaust stroke. So we're turning from power stroke into exhaust stroke. We're coming upwards. Exhaust valve is opening. Gases are going out. As we approach top dead center, our intake valve is now beginning to open. That's the measurement that we're after. That's what this cam timing is all about. So the valve overlap is that measurement, how much that intake valve opens when we're at top dead center. All right, so here we go with the intake stroke. See what's happening with the gauges, the valves opening. Right there. All right, let's just try and explain what just happened to the third stroke of this cycle. So uh, we're beginning our intake stroke up here. Uh, we're in valve overlap. Then as we travel down, the intake valve is opening. You can see this measurement grow as it was coming towards uh, the, the direction of bottom dead center. So as it's coming down, we're drawing in uh, air fuel mixture from our intake valve. Valve's opening up nice and wide. As we get towards the bottom here, which is where we're at now with our uh, 540 degrees, um, our valve is starting to shrink back now. Okay, so that valve is starting to close down uh, because it's going to turn in from our intake stroke and now we're going to begin our fourth stroke, which is on the way up, which is going to be our compression stroke. Okay, here we go. Back to our Z1 mark, the very beginning. I'm going to get back to top dead center, which is right, right there. On our dial indicator gauge, our valves are both closed. We're back at the beginning of where we started. That's four full strokes. And you can see our intake valve now, uh, intake and exhaust, are both closed. So now hopefully we've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on inside the engine and how it relates to our cam timing. Um, we've got number one cylinder uh, pretty much sorted out. So let's take a look at number four cylinder, see what it's going to take to set that guy up. Uh, really not that bad, uh, but there is definitely a starting point uh, that's going to make it a lot easier. We'll start with that first and go through the whole process. So the starting point for number four cylinder is going to be 360 degrees into our 720 degree rotation for our Z1 mark. And that will uh, bring our cams to the dot, zoom in on that, 
our uh, cam dots will be pointing down at this point. So no longer they'll be facing upward, they'll be facing downwards, and that's going to be the correct starting point for number four. Our uh, crankshaft orientation is set up. Uh, from there, we can set up our rocker arm and valve lash if we haven't done so already. Um, temperature and uh, correct spec on here is going to be really important to get a good, accurate gauge reading. Uh, once we set our lash, we like everything, then go ahead and mount your block, mount your gauge, and zero it out. And then double check one more time just to make sure our camshaft is in the correct orientation, which is dot facing downward. And then from there, 360 degrees. Okay, we're coming up on overlap. Right there. And then notice from here, from this position, this is where we're going to set our cam adjustment. But notice the dot now facing upwards. So that's how we come to that measurement, and that's basically how it all works. Well, as you can see by this video, it's quite a bit going on inside this engine in a 720 degree rotation. So hopefully uh, we helped uh, understand this a little bit better through this video, just breaking it down uh, stroke by stroke, get you a little bit better understanding of your uh, cam timing and what's going on with that. Uh, really recommend uh, doing a dry setup on an old block, roll through it, practice it, get it in your mind, how it all works, understand it. It's really gonna be helpful when you put your engine together for the, for the final go. You'll have an idea how to do it, you'll have total confidence to do it, you'll be able to get it done and have any problems. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.